final leaf pickup as freezing temperatures and snow quickly approach. And a push forward. It's something that we feel that maybe we can even have a small impact on. A big gift could pave the way for tiny homes. The MTN 530 News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for starting your week with us. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Andrea Lutz. Bed bugs continue to be a nightmare that never ends for residents at a Billings apartment complex. Yeah, this is what they're dealing with as these insects are taking over their entire living space. That problem is months old, but little has been done to solve the infestation, and frustrations really are growing by the day. Our Charlie Kleps has continuing coverage of this issue. Just over seven months ago, I stood here in front of Fraser Tower near downtown Billings and spoke with residents about a bed bug infestation going on inside the building. Well, it's now October and they say nothing's been done to fix the problem. And we've learned it might be happening in other communities around the state as well. It's emotionally draining. Billings resident Heidi Williams may not live at Fraser Tower, but she has friends who do. And she knows the toll bed bugs have taken on them over the past few years. They've been a part of our lives for a long time. And um, it, it is hard because well, you don't really know what to do. These pictures were snapped at the end of May. Imagine having these bugs crawling around you at night. Almost two months after MTN first introduced you to several residents at Sage Tower, another apartment complex for the disabled and elderly a couple blocks away. Both are managed by a company called Tamarack. You have to do a lot more than just spray the apartment. I mean, it's, it's difficult for them because they can't get rid of the bed bugs themselves. MTN reached out to Tamarack Monday. The company didn't respond to our questions instead telling us no comment. It's extremely saddening because these people are depending on a safe place to go home at night. Morgan Fradenberg used to work at a company who manages several group homes in Billings and says the problems at Fraser are something she's been hearing about for more than 10 years. It was emotionally traumatizing, especially for the higher functioning residents because they wanted to do everything they could to help their friends. Most of them, they don't have anywhere else to go and it isn't fair for them to be living in conditions where they're getting eaten alive essentially by tiny creatures and I was bit most recently two weeks ago. Mandy Maxwell doesn't live in Billings but at another complex in Anaconda, one also managed by Tamarack. Yet another property reportedly also overwhelmed by bed bugs. I don't know how to feel safe being in fight or flight and PTSD and I can't protect my son. A problem that's gone on for far too long and one many are hoping will soon be exterminated. It would be near impossible to get rid of the bed bug infestation in those places. But when you're talking about lives here, it, it has to be worth the investment. In Billings, Charlie Kleps for MTN News. An update on a deadly shooting from last November. The man accused of firing the gun in that deadly shooting from the backseat of a car is now charged. 23-year-old Brandon Cord Rockabove entered a not guilty plea on his own behalf. Rockabove is accused of shooting 31-year-old Walker Takes Horse on South 29th Street in early November of 2022. Rockabove was riding in a rear passenger seat as Take Horse drove the car with three others in it. Both escaped from a jail in Great Falls, and authorities say they began to argue inside of that vehicle. Prosecutors say Rockabove pulled out a gun and shot Take Horse. Rockabove's Montana ID card was found in the car. He's currently in the state prison on an escape charge. Well, now to the weather scene where the temperatures are dropping and the rain has been falling. But that rain will soon make its way into, you guessed it, yep, snow. This was the scene in Red Lodge today and not too far off from the Magic City. That snow expected to arrive late tomorrow night into Wednesday morning. And with more on this storm system and what we can expect, here's Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh. For Billings today, it was all about the rain that started to move in, and we had cooler temperatures as well below the seasonal averages, and we haven't said that for a while, about 8 degrees cooler than average at 47, but notice there wasn't much wiggle room from that 41, which is the coolest, almost a quarter inch of total precipitation uh, for Billings so far today. There's a few showers that are still in the area. High temperatures unofficially, we were in mainly the 40s from Billings towards the east, some 40s and low 50s elsewhere, but as we get into especially late tomorrow. That's when that next weather system will start to show up. And that'll bring not only rain switching to snow, but some colder temperatures, and that'll dominate the weather. Snow could be heavy at times Wednesday into Thursday. After that, it's really chilly. Forecast details coming up.
This weekend, many of us were in the backyard racing to get all of our leaves off the ground before the rain and snow all started to fall. But the question some are now asking is what to do with those leaves. Yeah, the city used to pick up bags of leaves from the curb, but not anymore. And that is leaving many residents frustrated. Our Haley Monaco looks into the changes. Before the anticipated snowfall hits Billings, the leaves fall first, filling yards with red, yellows, and oranges, and many try to get their yards picked up before winter hits. At the Veterans Park Leaf Collection site Monday morning, hundreds of bags were piled around an already full bin. Mounded up with bags earlier this morning, so we've obviously been here before uh, now cleaning it up. City of Billings Solid Waste Superintendent Kyle Foreman says leaf season is a busy one for public works. This is our biggest year yet so we've expanded to two different sites other than the six that we've had uh, the last couple of years. The city has added the Mayflower Church and Pioneer Park and the new locations aren't the only changes this year. In 23 we did all new residential collection routes by zone. Um, we've changed our extras program into a curbside uh, cardboard collection program. So we are no longer providing monthly extra collection just as a monthly route. We're still providing it, but you got to call us to let you know that you have it and then there is a small fee attached to it. Scott Siri has lived in Billings for many years and isn't thrilled about the changes and doesn't want to pay more for public works to pick up his leaves. And they're like, oh yeah, we're offering these conveniently located dumpsters. I drive a Honda Civic. I can maybe fit one bag of leaves into the back of that thing. Siri has been doing his best to just use his and his neighbor's green dumpster for the leaves and really just wants an explanation. Is it not enough employees to drive the trucks around and pick them up? There was really no reasoning behind, hey, we're just, we don't want to do it anymore, so haul your bags across town and dump them yourself. He nailed the reason behind it. According to Foreman, it's a matter of employees. Couldn't staff it anymore. It was hard on our staff. Um, lots of injuries, lots of, lots of workers' comps. So we had to really kind of start to take a look at it. You know, what used to be a monthly collection is no longer there. So I understand the frustration. It's not that we're not providing it. We're just not providing it the way that we used to. Weather dependent, the leaf collection sites should be open until December 8th. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Montana State University researchers could help with management and restoration of white bark pine trees. White bark pines have experienced significant declines due to disease and climate change and are now listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. It's considered a keystone species supporting grizzly bears and birds. The study identifies traits that may help the trees resist environmental stressors like fungus, bark beetles and drought. The study sets a foundation for future work. Plans to build a tiny home village in Billings are now delayed. The project originally set to launch last spring was placed on hold, although it did get a big push forward today thanks to a major gift from the downtown Billings Rotary Club. MTN's Jackie Coffin has more on that and the reason behind that delay. Right now, this lot on 6th Street across from North Park is empty, but Salvation Army has a vision to transform this land, which they own, into transitional housing for adults in the community. Rising building costs have pushed this project out a little bit, but Salvation Army remains committed as ever. There's a gentleman that slept outside our building for a couple of years. You know, over the years that he was out on the streets, he was beat up for no reason at all. It, it broke my heart. It broke my heart. I, I had to do something. Working day in and day out with Billings homeless community, Colin and Felicia Pedersen have many stories to share. My heart goes up to her because every night she's outside alone as a woman. That freaks me out. She's somebody's sister, daughter. And the husband wife team of lieutenants in the Salvation Army are sharing these stories with a solution that starts with a place to sleep in a village of tiny homes. The William Booth Village is actually a 28 uh, sleeping cabin units and it will also include a commons building which has showers and kitchen and social service programs. Plans for a tiny home village were first unveiled by the Salvation Army last November and caused some waves in the community. No, 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 no. I mean on your side, Buster. Concerns Colin and Felicia met head on and have worked to address. And we've really been working diligently with our neighbors, attending neighborhood meetings, uh, trying to get to know our neighbors better and, and let them know that they can be part of the process. 
Set to break ground on phase one of the project last spring, the Pedersons say soaring building costs forced them to rethink the plan, and instead of rolling it out in phases, they are now raising the more than $1 million still needed to build it all at once. And they're getting some help. I think when it comes to helping those that are in need, it's easy for some of us to just turn away and pretend like it's not there, but it is here, it's real, and it's something that we feel that maybe we can even have a small impact on. The Downtown Billings Rotary Club pledged $100,000 to the project and gifted the first half on Monday, putting the Pedersons and Salvation Army closer to turning this lot into a safe place to sleep. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. It's almost time to get those Montana Millionaire tickets. Tickets going on sale Wednesday, November 1st. And this year, it's better than ever because you now have three chances to win a million dollars. This year, 380,000 tickets will be sold and 100,000 increase from last year is what that is. Tickets sold out in just 30 hours last year. Montana Millionaire also has more than 4,000 instant win tickets for $100 or $500. Each ticket costs $20 with all $3 million prizes being drawn on December 26th. And there will also be two early bird drawings, one November 24th for $25,000 and another on December 15th for $100,000. Well, still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, a blast from the past. Uh, catch up with a station favorite who at 92 years young is sharing memories in a new book. And in sports, the best of the best will have the top five plays from the final weekend of the regular season. Game Changers is in just a bit.